It's January 2023. Can you believe it? 2023. We're done with 2022 and this is the video to take a look at January and the transits that are ahead of us. The month starts off a little bit slow. Things might be more confusing and uncertain with Mars and its ruler Mercury both being retrograde. But then once Mercury and Mars and Uranus station direct, after January 22nd, we will have all 10 planets direct for three months. So it's the perfect opportunity to get things started and to press go ahead on all of your projects. Let's take a closer look at the month and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment, show me some love. It encourages me to make more videos and it helps the algorithm of YouTube to show my videos to more people, so it helps me grow. A couple of announcements before I dive in. If you'd like to work with me and you'd like to book a reading, there are links down below. You can get your 2023 horoscope at a discounted price right now until January 31st to get $23 off with the code 2023. If you like the horoscopes I offer and you'd like to get a personal horoscope every month, you can become a subscriber on my website and sign up to get your specific personal horoscopes every month. And finally, as you know, I have been creating products and assigning them to a specific moment, specific astrological moment that has really strong benevolent properties. So if you need help working with your challenging planets, let's say your Venus is in Aries or Scorpio or Virgo, and you'd like to help your love life or your Jupiter is in Gemini or Capricorn or Virgo, and you'd like to help your can help yourself find some optimism and abundance in your life, you can definitely benefit from getting a candle or an oil that I created with uh, powerful Venus or Jupiter. So let's talk about, let's talk about January. I think it's a pretty good month. There are some challenging transits as always. No month is perfect, but overall it's a really nice, it's a slow ease into the year, right? Um, so I'll do, I'll do like a brief kind of rundown of the month and then we'll talk about the most important transits for every sign. So listen up to the general transits. I think it's really important to know the overall energy before you listen to your sign. So we start slow. Mars is retrograde until the 12th. Mercury is retrograde until the 18th. Mercury rules Mars. So it's not the best time to get things going. You are sort of feel uncertain. You may feel uninspired. You may feel low on energy. So it's best to take things easy and reevaluate your approach to things, right? Like if you've been feeling burned out, maybe it's the time to come up with a different strategy and figure out a new plan. Jupiter has entered Aries at the end of December, on December 20th. So there might be an impulse to be moving, but you may not, like it's best to not move. It's crazy because like I am born with Jupiter in Aries. It's my Jupiter return and now there's Jupiter in Aries in the skies and I've had like a million of different ideas for different videos I can be making and I'm still trying to make them but you know I understand that the time is limited and it's about prioritizing. So prioritize and make sure to prioritize rest. Make sure to put some relaxation into your schedule. Um, once Mercury goes direct, so Mars goes direct on the 12th, Mercury goes direct on the 18th, but then 22nd of January is my personal star date because after January 22nd and until April 21st, we will have all 10 planets direct. So perfect opportunity to start all of your important work. So personally, I would wait for any major kind of things. Don't get married. <laughs> uh, don't start your business, you know. Maybe wait to apply for a visa until January 22nd. So the month begins shaky and dramatic. Venus conjoins Pluto. Venus conjunct Pluto can bring up the darkness and have the darkness kind of explode on you if you haven't been working with it. So 
There may be secrets coming to light. There may be challenging emotions and relationships, power struggles becoming more visible. Um, you know, like potentially coming up, bringing up topics from last year. If you have dealt with any drama last year when Venus was conjoining Pluto, the sun is also squaring Chiron around the same time. So you are feeling vulnerable um, and maybe a little insecure. And perhaps the Venus-Pluto conjunction comes from that or is even stronger because you're feeling insecure. So try to be honest, try to pay attention to the feelings that come up. And then this transit can be really healing, especially if you lean into self-love. Venus enters Aquarius on January 2nd and stays in Aquarius until January 26th. So we have, especially at first when Venus in Aquarius, the energy is more detached, we're more experimental, more playful, more rational in our relationships. January 3rd into 5th, as well as 9th, 8th, 9th, are really good because Venus will be sextiling Jupiter in Aries and Venus will be training Mars in Gemini. So good time for social pursuits, for just hanging out with friends, reaching out to people in your network, asking for support, presenting your ideas. Still lots of retrograde energy, energy in the sky, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull the plug for the major projects, but I would do a lot of behind the scenes work at the time and relationships can be faring particularly well that will likely be tested your relationship commitments and friendships will be tested in the middle of the month closer to the 14th but before that on january 5th the sun will try in uranus so around that time there might be innovative exciting energy that brings breakthroughs good news and lucky opportunities great time to try something you've never tried before to look at the problem from a brand new perspective we have a full moon on january 6th full moon in cancer in the rational capricorn season always has the potential to feel extra emotional right it's a powerful full moon it's in its home sign but we've been so focused on the rationale of capricorn we may have neglected our feelings so this will be very much like I don't care about what's rational. This is how I feel. So beware of being extra emotional and take good care of yourself. There is a lovely support of trying to um, sextile actually from the moon and cancer to Uranus and Taurus, suggesting that we need to be flexible and open-minded. And that maybe sometimes insights will come from places we least expect them to come from. Mercury conjoins the sun on January 7th, bringing insights and powerful thinking. It's exact early in the morning, 7.56 a.m. on January 7th. So you may want to wake up early, meditate, journal, be quiet with yourself and connect with the universe and like maybe some downloads will come your way. Mars goes direct on January 12th, right? It's still going to be ruled by Mercury retrograde because Mars is in Gemini, so it wouldn't celebrate quite yet. But slowly and surely, you might experience increase in the martial topic. So if you felt like your libido was kind of low, if your energy was kind of low, you didn't know which direction to take. Slowly, especially after January 18th, when Mercury goes direct, you will experience the boost and improvement in those areas. Venus will square Uranus on January 14th, and this is like lightning striking in a relationship, brightening up all the difficulty, but also potentially allowing for transformation, for like sudden and quick change in a relationship. So it could be it could be tough you know i'm sort of calling it as like when your experiment went too far you know sometimes also you look at kids and you see them playing and they're having so much fun but sometimes you know that it's like too much fun that someone's gonna get hurt there's almost always this feeling like someone's gonna cry at the end of this play date so so here is there's a potential for like you're experimented or you or your partner wanted freedom too much that there's like a snap um there might be pressures in relationships and questions around freedom so if you are if you are in a tough relationship that is not doing so well this could break it 
But if you are in a healthy relationship and you allow freedom to one another, it can be the opportunity for it to grow and move to the next level. So Mercury goes direct on January 18th. The Sun will conjoin Pluto on the same day. So your thinking is very focused you're likely to be very persuasive and very powerful in your speech but watch out for manipulating others for being too kind of cutthroat you don't want to be cutthroat and there might be a tendency to be that way at the same time an opportunity to perhaps address the darker habits the negative tendencies you have Aquarius season begins on January 20th. We have a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st. The moon sextiles Jupiter. So there is lucky, optimistic energy. Um, Even the fact that Mars and Mercury have already stationed direct. I think there's like exciting and fresh energy. And I'll talk about what this means for your sign in a little bit when I'm doing horoscopes. Uranus goes direct on the 22nd. Like I said, this marks the period of three months when all three planets are going direct. So if you're waiting to start something, if you want to start a business, if you want to apply for a visa, if you want to plan your travels, this could be the time. January 24th is really nice. The sun will sextile Jupiter and anywhere where you get to present your ideas, you you need to be in front of people. Um, you need to lead and inspire those kind of projects are likely to be successful and you will also any projects that deal with Jupiterian matters which is learning traveling kind of expanding your world and working with others will be successful Venus enters Pisces on January 26th Venus is exalted in Pisces and will stay in the sign of the fish until until February 20th so our we become we idealize love in Pisces we we are able to be in the moment we're able to savor everything even heartbreak has a special place in the heart of Venus and Pisces individuals and if you're born with this placement let me know if that's the truth Um, But Venus here is empowered and strong, so your relationships might become more magical, spiritual, and soulful. Of course, as always, there's fine print. Be careful. Um, Watch out for savior-victim dynamics and poor boundaries. Finally, um, on January 29th, the Sun will trine Mars and Mercury will trine Uranus. I have December 29th in my notes. And this is Sun trying Mars gives you energy. Mercury trying Uranus gives you innovative scientific kind of know-how energy. So it's a great time to start projects that both require energy, but also intellect, tech, social media, knowledge. So quick look at January 2023. I hope you found this helpful and now let's take a look at the 12 signs and see what you may expect based on your rising sign. I use rising signs because rising sign determines where the transits fall in your chart. You may also listen for your moon or your sun sign if you resonate with them more. So for Aries rising, Jupiter has entered your first house and you are in the process of reinventing yourself. You may be focusing on leadership projects, on opportunities to teach, looking for a chance to kind of improve your physical body, improve your presence in the world. Yet because Mars is still retrograde and Mercury is retrograde until January 18th, you may, you may kind of choose to focus on planning versus acting especially when it comes to your professional matters or to your skills and schedule because with mercury being retrograde in the house of career and mars being retrograde in the house of schedule you may feel dissatisfied with perhaps things are overwhelming at work or maybe you feel like you're not getting the best use of your time or your schedule feels confusing you may be you know maybe there's some glitches in communication then you need to clear up and figure them out sun is in cap the sun is in capricorn until january 20th so a lot of focus on work a lot of focus on you and your goals 
I would, you know, I would, if you're unsure about which professional direction you want to go in, I would try to look back because Mercury is retrograde in the house of career and perhaps looking back at what once brought you joy or what was your original motivation behind starting the career you're in could bring you some insights and some clarity. The beginning of the month is shaky. Venus conjoins Pluto in your 10th house of career on January 1st. So watch out for drama and power struggles in the professional environment. Tensions can become more visible. Secrets can come to light. Venus goes into Aquarius, your 11th house on January 2nd. And until January 26th, you are shining the most in a social context. You may want to network, to socialize, to ask people for support. January 4th and 9th are especially lucky as Venus sextiles Jupiter in your first house. So good luck to networking and socializing. And Venus also trains Mars on January 9th in your third house. So here, what you, the words you say are well received and any tech projects, any skillful projects, writing projects will be successful. Conflicts with friends and issues around values are possible on January 14th as Venus squares Uranus in your second house. Like financial matters can be tricky. Perhaps a friend owes you money and they're not paying it back and you're sort of at the end of your rope, so to speak. So be careful fighting, right? Try to be honest, but I, I mean, depends, I guess, on the kind of friend it is. But like, I would recommend trying to solve problems without fighting with your friends. And then the situation might get resolved later in the month, around January 22nd, as Venus conjoins Saturn. But it feels like you are, you, you are taking on a more mature role and maybe acting like a grown-up in this situation is sort of like let, letting your friend off the hook for a little bit of time or just taking the responsibility and being the bigger person. Full moon in Cancer on January 6th brings completion to a family or home matter. Um, so maybe there is some family drama. It doesn't have to be drama, but like some family situation that needs your attention. Uh, maybe you are moving, maybe you're finishing a renovation project. There is a sextile, a happy sextile to Uranus in the house of money. So potentially you get some money that you invest into your home or into real estate. Or maybe you're getting money from home and family as well and choosing to invest it into something else. Mars goes direct on January 12th. This is exciting. You are ruled by Mars. So when Mars is retrograde, it might be harder for you to know which direction to take. So slowly but surely you can experience, especially after January 18th, when Mercury also goes direct, you will experience more clarity about your skills, about the use of your time, about your schedule, or any relationships with siblings and neighbors. You may kind of experience a sense of clarity and more understanding of how to use your time, how to better use your time. Um, and you know, any professional matters can also clarify after that time. Aquarius season begins on January 20th and there's a new moon on January 21st. The new moon brings new beginnings to your house of community and friendships and networks. And it's exiling Jupiter in your first house. So I feel like you're taking some kind of action. You may be starting a project within your community, like you are starting to volunteer or you're leading some kind of political organization. You may be choosing to join a new group of friends or you are initiating going to the gym together, like starting a workout group or something. Like, But definitely feels like who's in your corner, who's supporting you um, becomes more important than maybe you are finding those people or you're pursuing dreams that deal with your place as a teacher, as a mentor, as a leader in the community. Uranus goes direct on January 22nd until April 21st. All planets are direct. This could be the busiest and most productive time this year. 
And finally, Venus enters Pisces, your 12th house on January 26th. And until January 20th, your love life, until February 20th, your love life is more quiet, more behind the scenes. Um, you may be more inspired. You may be more interested in spiritual matters, mysteries, astrology, tarot. But watch out for choosing people who need saving, or choosing people who have some kind of issues where you have to be the you know the savior don't sacrifice yourself for others moving on to taurus rising for taurus rising jupiter has entered the 12th house and you may be feeling restless to travel to um start some kind of spiritual projects to get involved with helping and healing others yet it's likely that you need to take it easy and proceed slowly especially because Mars is retrograde in your house of finances and Mercury is retrograde in your ninth house of beliefs and travel and education. So this is this could be like interesting, right? Like maybe with Jupiter in the ninth, you are you really want to travel or you want to start a new career that's more healing or you want to move away from home, which is still kind of traveling, but but Mercury is retrograde in the ninth, Mars is retrograde in the second, and you sort of need to look at your finances and look at your whether you have enough in your budget. You need to maybe get some legal papers first, um, deal with some kind of bureaucracy behind the scenes matters, get education, right, before you jump in, dive in, and rush into things. Um, the, sun stays, the sun stays in Capricorn until January 20th. So this is also pointing to the fact that you are focusing on traveling, growing, learning, and questioning whether you know enough, whether you believe in yourself enough, whether you're surrounded by the right teachers, the right mentors, um, kind of whether you feel valued. In the beginning of the month, on January 1st, Venus conjoins Pluto. <clears throat> so you want to watch out for battles with teachers or for any kind of ideological conflicts surrounding your views or your place in the world. Venus goes into Aquarius, your house of career, on January 2nd. And until January 26th, you are better received at work. You are choosing more creative projects. You're enjoying things you do. Your relationship with bosses is likely easier. Of course, it depends on what you do, right? Like if you're hating your job and Venus goes into the 10th, it will help, but it's not going to solve all the problems. But you, you will kind of feel a strong pull and also just start to question whether you are happy with what you do. And if you don't feel as happy, maybe it's time to change things up, especially when the Aquarius season begins on January 20th. January 4th and 9th are especially lucky and blessed as Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. So you may experience a sense of support, um, even, even when it, if it comes from, even if it comes from spiritual matters like meditation, maybe you listen to a video or listen to a podcast that is very supportive and encouraging. There may be financial gains because Venus will try Mars on the 9th. Um, January 14th and a couple of days before after could be rocky because Venus will square Uranus. So this is very much your independence versus trying to keep peace with people in authority. And that could be bosses, that could be parents, that could be elders. Um, but the shakeups that are going to come may show to you what needs to be changed, what needs to be improved. And on the solution may come closer to January 22nd as Venus conjoins Saturn. And sometimes Venus conjunct Saturn is a sign that you need to put more effort in and you need to be patient and you need to be kind of a grown up in the situation. But the answer will be given to you, just not yet. There's a full moon in Cancer, your third house on January 6th, that can bring a completion of a writing project, change the life of your sibling somehow. Let's say your sibling is pregnant and they give birth to a child. 
Um, there might also be a change to some communication matter, um, project that was kind of got you involved with the community, your role in community and your neighborhood might be changing as well. It sextiles Uranus in the house of self. So I think perhaps your choice of your, you working on your growth and your skills brings those changes, brings the completion of those projects. Mars goes direct on January 12th and Mercury goes direct on January 18th. So since Mercury rules Mars, this is very positive for both your financial matters, but also matters connected to education, legal, publishing, travel matters. You know, if there's been any delays and difficulty, things will slowly start to improve and get better. Aquarius season begins on January 20th and we have a new moon in Aquarius on January 21st. It is activating your 10th house and it's also sextiling Jupiter in your 12th. So new beginnings at work, the sextile to Jupiter feels like either there's some kind of imaginative opportunity and project or a project that takes you further away from home um, or just changes to career that bring better mental health and bring more peace to you. So kind of exciting. It looks like a positive new moon, especially because of a sextile to Jupiter. Jupiter in the 12th just also makes me think of maybe needing to let something go in order to bring more peace into your life. Uranus goes direct in your first house um, on January 22nd. So chances to be independent and free and more innovative um, are going to go up. You know, you're more likely to be more free and independent and starting January 22nd until April 21st, all 10 planets are direct. So this should be the busiest time where you are accomplishing the most and getting things moving. And finally, Venus enters Pisces, your 11th house on January 26th. And until February 20th, you are well received in social situations. You are at your most charming when you are out and about with your friends or if you're presenting a project in front of other people, it will be easier to get the support of others and it will be easier to express yourself on social media in a beautiful, eloquent and charming ways. For Gemini rising, Jupiter has entered your 11th house, the sign of Aries on December 20th and will stay there until May 16th. So you may be questioning your role in the community, your place amongst your friends or your place on social media and being ready to pursue dreams, especially projects you would have started from May into October 2022. Maybe you are continuing with those. It's not a good time to rush into things. It's better to keep planning and kind of keep mapping up your future steps, especially since Mars is currently retrograde in your first house of self and self-expression and physical energy. So you may be dealing with certain matters related to your health and kind of questioning the direction to go in, working on yourself, working on personal initiatives, but not having the full sense of clarity. And you're ruled by Mercury and Mercury will be retrograde in your eighth house until January 18th. So there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things that you need to handle, especially with Mercury being retrograde. The sun is in Capricorn until January 20th. And maybe on your path to this new chapter in your life and the dreams that you're trying to pursue and social media heights that you're trying to reach, you need to first let go of some kind of debts, pay off any debts, get the money that is owed to you, handle some matters related to inheritance, taxes, insurance, um, anywhere where you are relating with other people and managing other people's resources. So focus early in the month until the 18th on clarifying things. After January 22nd, Uranus stations direct and we begin the three months long process until April 21st of all 10 planets going direct. So this is your time to push forward with all of your projects and kind of get things moving. 
You may get into battles about money, about fairness, about give and take early in the month as Venus conjoins Pluto on January 1st, so be careful. Shortly after that, energy lightens up as Venus goes into, your, into Aquarius, your ninth house, on January 2nd. Until January 26th, you are finding a lot more joy in traveling, in learning, in going to museums, exploring new things, writing and meeting foreign people. This is where a lot of good luck may lie. And especially with Venus in your ninth, you may even meet someone cute on your travels, right? If you're single or if you're in a relationship, maybe you go away with your partner and you have a great time. Legal matters can also be sped up and encouraged with Venus in the ninth house. January 4th and 9th are especially lucky as Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. January 14th is a bit more shaky. Um, there might be kind of conflicts and drama or breakthroughs surrounding travel, legal, spiritual, mental health kind of things. Um, but just overall frustration around the 14th. But also frustration that like illuminates things. Maybe you realize that you need to let something go, but it brings more clarity your way. And whatever frustrated you will likely clear up closer to January 22nd as Venus conjoins Saturn. You sort of have to be the bigger person, the more responsible one, and maybe take on the role of a leader, an elder, when it comes to legal, education, travel, publishing, and writing matters. There's a full moon in Cancer, your second house on January 6th. It brings completion to a financial chapter. Either you're getting payment for a project you may have started six months ago, you're paying off a debt, you are getting a bonus, right? Or you're making a big investment. Your career, your income may be changing, or you may be ready. You may be like feeling like your values have changed because the full moon in Cancer in the second house could also very much be about, well, I've been slaving away doing this kind of work and it no longer feels satisfying, so I'm going to say goodbye. Um, and even that energy, the energy of letting something go is supported by a sextile to Uranus in your 12th house. So freeing yourself from something that doesn't serve you, I can see here. Mars goes direct on January 12th. Mercury goes direct on January 18th. And there is a sense of improvement to first house, which is your physical energy, and eighth house, which is finances, debts, taxes shared resources, any give and take and questions of fairness. Maybe you are getting ready to transform something because Mercury being direct in the eighth house, clarity about where are you tangled up with others, what kind of agreements you have that need to be let go, what needs to be shuffled around in order to bring better balance into your life. Aquarius season begins on January 20th and there is a new moon in Aquarius on January 21st. It activates your ninth house, so there's new beginnings and it's also sextiling Jupiter in the 11th. New beginnings to this place of faith and religion and expansion. So you may be ready to present your work or you're getting ready to step into the world in a new new facet, new expression. So you may be starting a class, maybe you're going to school. A Gemini rising, I know, just signed up for astrology courses, so she's learning astrology. Maybe you are presenting yourself as a teacher and getting ready to teach. Maybe you're starting a writing project or you're presenting or publishing your work, you're announcing it to the world. And it's likely to be well received because there's a sextile to Jupiter in the 11th house and you get like good support network. Finally, Venus enters Pisces on January 26th. That is your 10th house until February 20th. You get good luck and support and better relationships with bosses and more opportunities to be creative professionally, more inspiration. For Cancer rising, Jupiter has entered your 10th house and you may feel restless and ready to 
do more things, to pursue new professional things, right? Like it's really good for career. At the same time, Mars is still retrograde in your 12th house. Mars rules Jupiter. Mercury rules Mars. Mercury is retrograde in your 7th house until January 18th. So it seems like before you start these new professional chapters, or this new one professional chapter, there are certain things you have to clear. With Mars retrograde in the 12th, you may, do, you may need to do some healing, focus on your mental health. Um, with the Mercury being retrograde in the 7th, there's some relationship matters that you need to address. Maybe you are ready to take on a new job and move, but your partner doesn't want to move and you need to have good con you have you need to have clear conversations with them um rethinking how you show up in relationships rethinking how you communicate in relationships and you know how this new professional or future chapter affects your relationship sometimes jupiter in the 10th can also bring changes to your status so it's not necessarily career but it's some kind of thing in the world that you're announcing or you're taking on maybe you are retiring or you are starting to volunteer or something something that deals with your place your visibility outside of home some kind of status thing there might be some relationship drama and some kind of darkness coming to light in the beginning of the month january 1st venus conjoins pluto so be careful watch out for manipulating and trying to get your way it will do you good to be more honest and to look at yourself and look at your own responses versus blaming others and pointing fingers the energy shifts and improves when venus goes into aquarius your eighth house starting on january 2nd until january 26. venus in the eighth is good for collaborating with others working with other people paying off debts sometimes venus here could be like bring debt forgiveness right can also bring gifts from other people it could bring could improve your partner's finances and by partner if you live with your mother maybe it's your mother right <laughs> like their finances improve and they they become more generous with you and they give you more support January 4th and 9th are especially lucky because Venus is going to sextile Jupiter in your house of career and it's going to train Mars in your 12th house. So feels like financial gains from work or opportunities to travel, to heal, to transform like a negative tendency. Yeah, transformation reads very strongly through this. Transformation release of something that either professional or personal that doesn't serve you anymore. There may be tensions and conflicts with friends, friends and maybe like issues, disagreement between your view of things and the way your friends see things or even the group that you work with or a volunteer organization you're a part of around January 14th as Venus squares Uranus. Um, and the situation may not get resolved and will likely require you to be more serious and somber and kind of like take responsibility for your actions closer to January 22nd. So don't rush to, to cut people out of your life because things may improve and get better later on. There's a full moon in your first house, very significant on January 6th. It may bring a resolution of health matter if you've been dealing with some kind of health situation for the last six months completion of a personal project emotional release just sort of like there's been a lot of focus on relationships maybe you decide to focus on yourself and go get a haircut or go buy yourself something <laughs> Um, I mean, you have expensive taste with Leo being your second house, so watch out for spending too much money. But maybe you are getting ready for a new chapter in your life and in order to welcome that new chapter, right, with Jupiter being in the house of career, you first, you first need to say goodbye to something from before. Um, Uranus, this new moon, full moon, sorry, sextiles Uranus in the 11th house and so maybe the changes that are happening in your friendships or the new dreams that you are getting excited about is causing you to 
transform yourself. Mars goes direct on January 12th. Mercury goes direct on January 18th. You can expect to gain more clarity with Mars being retrograde in the 12th house. Maybe things seemed like especially confusing and you could have felt like you can't even trust your own intuition. Um, and relationship matters should improve. Like if there's been any old conversations you've been having with your partner and not knowing how to move to a place of peace and calm, you can experience more clarity and understanding, better understanding in your relationship. Aquarius season begins on January 20th. There's a new moon on January 21st that sextiles Jupiter in the 10th. So if like new moon in the eighth house is good for paying off debts, re, like kind of releasing things that are holding you back, releasing relationships, releasing contracts, releasing commitments, making better choices that lead to more financial and personal freedom, I would imagine here. Getting a mortgage, getting a loan, paying off a mortgage or a loan are possibilities here as well. But it feels very professionally oriented. So if you get a loan, maybe it's to start a business. If you pay off a debt, maybe it's to start a business. So there's like good professional vibes. And finally, Venus enters Pisces, your ninth house on January 26th. And until February 20th, you seek to travel, to learn, to expand, and you may be dating someone foreign, or you may meet someone on your travels or decide to go on an adventure with your partner. For Leo rising, Jupiter has entered your ninth house and there is an urge to travel, to relocate, to learn new things, to kind of expand your world, to take on more. Yet at the same time, Mars is retrograde in your 11th house is Mercury and Mercury is retrograde in your sixth house. So. And that's until January 18th. The start of the month is pretty slow and you will need to try really hard to resist this urge to <laughs> move into all kinds of directions. Um, Mars retrograde in the 11th is likely making you look at your friendships and look at your dreams and see whether you have the right connections, whether you're happy with your friendships, whether you know you have what you need to take the next steps. And even Mercury in the sixth house to me is very similar. Like, yes, you're ready for the next chapter in your life, but is your laundry done? Have you made an appointment with your doctor? Have you been resting enough, right? Like, how can you have a better schedule? How can you improve your everyday life? How can you overcome the difficulties you still have to overcome? Like, debts you have to pay, professional relationships you have to settle, before you move towards these new horizons. And luckily, you know, we have all this retrograde energy in the beginning of the month. So use it to get some clarity, right? Like use it to bring positive changes because after January 22nd, when Uranus stations direct, all 10 planets will be direct until April 21st. And you really want to use that period to go after the things you are excited about. The month begins shaky on January 1st. Venus will conjoin Pluto and there might be some work drama or, you know, some tensions surrounding your living situation. Maybe who does the dishes, who clears out the trash. So be careful. Lovely romantic energy with Venus entering Aquarius. <laughs> Sorry. I got like, ah. Venus enters Aquarius, your seventh house on January 2nd and until January 26th. This is a good time to date. This is a good time to spend more time with your partner, look for clients, plant seeds of your business growth, right? Like it's lovely for romance, but it's also good for partnering up with others. January 4th and 9th are especially lucky as Venus aspects Jupiter and Mars in harmonious ways. January 14th can be tense because Venus is going to square Uranus in your 10th house of career. So there is some tension between your business or your relationship and your career. Um, be careful getting into fights surrounding those matters and look for ways to break through the tensions and the difficulty towards more freedom and growth. Um, 
it's likely that you may have to wait for things to settle. Venus conjoins Saturn on January 22nd. And this might be the time when you have to like kind of face the music off if there was any drama and make long-term decisions related to your relationship or your business partnership. It's also a good time to start something that's going to be long-term, right? Like if you are considering starting a side hustle after January 22nd, all planets are direct, Venus is conjunct Saturn, committing to a relationship or committing to an art project to a business is really a good time at that time, at that point. There's a full moon in Cancer on January 6th. Cancer is your 12th house. So there might be a completion of a spiritual pro project, um, something you started six months ago, like you started meditating regularly and now you are seeing the results. You may be choosing to take a step back. There might be some kind of emotional release. Full moons are always tensions between, like you've been handling all this work stuff, you've been taking care of your health, now you just really want to step away and, you know, hole up, <laughs> wrap yourself in a blanket and like relax a little bit. This full moon sextile is Uranus in the 10th house. So like I said, maybe you're taking a break from work or maybe you're just realizing what changes you need to make surrounding your work life to bring more balance. Mars goes direct on January 12th, Mercury goes direct on the 18th, and you may see more clarity when it comes to your plans for the future and getting the right connections, your friendships, kind of your next steps might become more clear, as well as with Mercury direct in the 18th, there might be more clarity about your work and your dreams. Um, yeah, at the same time. Aquarius season begins on January 20th, and there's a new moon on January 21st. The new moon sextiles Jupiter in the 9th. So new moon in the 7th is new beginnings romantically and new beginnings in business, new beginnings in partnerships. The sextile to Jupiter in the 9th makes me feel like either it's a business partnership or it's a writing partnership or it involves moving together with your partner somewhere far away. There may be like legal matters you need to deal with connected to your business, but overall an exciting, fresh, romantic energy, I would say. Venus enters Pisces, your eighth house on January 26th, and until February 20th, you may be paying off debts, getting debts forgiven, getting support from your partner, where your partner is maybe their finances are improving and they're very generous with you they're helping you pay off your debts so a really lovely period to collaborate with others to lean on others for help and to reach out to your connections for support for virgo rising jupiter has entered your eighth house on december 20th and will stay in your eighth house until May 16th, 2023. So there's a strong urge to either start collaborations with others and maybe join forces or the opposite urge, the urge to free yourself from debts and from obligations so that maybe you have more opportunities to pursue things that you are excited about. However, Mars is still retrograde in your house of career Mercury's retrograde and your house of joy and fun and children until January 18th. So there's still uncertainty, right? Like before you start these new partnerships or start a new chapter in your life, you first need to clarify professional matters and what is it that you are aspiring towards and what is it that brings you joy? Because I think I think the main question here with Mars retrograde and Mercury retrograde is like whether your work is making you happy. And if it's not, the retrograde could encourage you to look back at um, when you were small, when you were a kid, and what made you happy, what brought you joy. So with Jupiter in the eighth and you having more access to the resources of other people and help of other people, you need to choose wisely what is it that you want to pursue. So the first 
three weeks of the month until January 22nd when Uranus stations direct is confusing. But then after Uranus stations direct on January 22nd until April 21st, all 10 planets will be direct. So that is the time to go after your dreams and kind of pursue things and, you know, be more proactive about them. The Mars, Mars, month begins kind of shaky. Venus conjoins Pluto in your house of romance, creativity, and children. And there might be secrets coming to light, some kind of romantic tensions, creative dramas, and conflicts or issues surrounding children and, you know, childbirth on January 1st. So Venus conjoins Pluto and it's, it's a little shaky. Watch out for manipulating others and for trying to get what you want through a more dark tactics. Um, Venus goes into Aquarius, your sixth house, on January 2nd and until January 26th. You may experience ease when it comes to your relationships with colleagues. Um, there may be more joy in the mundane, like you start to listen to a podcast when you do laundry. Um, you find a new book that you like to read while you are in line somewhere. So there's more opportunities to improve your everyday life and your professional relationships. Maybe take care of your health as well. January 4th and 9th are especially lovely as Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. So good energy professionally, but potentially some kind of financial gains. Um, January 14th is more complicated. There may be some conflicts surrounding, you know, if, you, if you're if you waiting for like a contact from another department to bring your paperwork, maybe they're not. There may be some legal matters that are frustrating to you, maybe some education matters that are frustrating that you feel like they're blocking you. And there may be conflicts or drama around January 14th as Venus squares Uranus. You may have to wait to get some clarity on this situation until January 22nd as Venus conjoins Saturn. And it's also likely, I would urge you not to make any harsh decisions or say any harsh words because Venus conjunct Saturn is like a reality check. And if you've strayed too far from um, your responsibilities or strayed too far from being reasonable, Saturn will sort of make you dial it back and fix things and be the responsible one. There's a full moon in Cancer, your 11th house on January 6th. Uh, full moon in Cancer brings completion to a group project. Maybe you are finishing a social media project, like you've been writing articles for um, page and now you're done. Changes to a friendship are possible as well as changes to your friendship group, right? Like maybe um, one of your friends is moving away or maybe you've been going to a class together, exercising together and that's no longer a thing. Um, the the sextile there is a sextile to uranus from the full moon in the so full moon in the 11th sextile in uranus in the ninth and perhaps the changes to your friendships or networks is connected to an upcoming move or to an upcoming kind of like change in your education right maybe you're going to school and that brings transformation of your friendships um yeah that could be a possibility here Mars goes direct on January 12th and Mercury goes direct on January 18th. So finally, finally, you can experience more clarity when it comes to work. Have you been dealing with any tensions professionally, uncertainty, kind of bosses maybe acting weird? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love, <laughs> I'd love to know. But yeah, like the January 18th could be a turning point where you're more likely to get clarity about professional matters, as well as, you know, Mercury being retrograde this month in your fifth house could also bring exes back and could bring past relationships in for another round. So maybe you are getting clarity about your love life as well, together with career. Maybe your professional confusion is connected to your love life. I don't know. Aquarius season begins on January 20th. There's a new moon on January 21st. It brings it activates your sixth house. It sextiles Jupiter in the eighth house. So new beginnings when it comes to health, 
service, committing to something that is really big and will take you a long time. So, you know, like going back to school, starting therapy, starting a partnership, committing, yeah, like committing to something that will bring better health and better balance into your life is likely here. Finally, on January 26th and until February 20th, Venus will enter your seventh house. And this is exciting because seventh house is the place of romance and it's the place of partnerships and business relationships and kind of conception of new joint ventures. So Venus being here, an exalted Venus, can improve your love life, can improve your business life and kind of bring more opportunities to partner up with others. For Libra Risings, Jupiter has entered your seventh house, creating a strong urge to collaborate with others, to partner up, to pursue any business initiatives, look back at what did Jupiter instigate and inspire in your life between May and October 2022 to see what kind of things you will be continuing on. At the same time, I would urge you not to jump into things or not to rush to commit to anything because Mars is still retrograde in your ninth house, making you question your place in the world, your beliefs, your schedule, perhaps, right? Um, your education and your commitments. And Mercury, together with the Sun, are highlighting your fourth house until Mercury is retrograde until January 18th. The Sun is in your fourth house until January 20th. And there may be certain family matter, certain things connected to your place of living that you first need to sort through. So let's say there is an opportunity to, or like you want to move in with your partner, but you first need to kind of complete your lease or maybe your mom lives with you. So you need to clarify what's going to happen to your mom once you move in together. So there are certain family living situation things that you need to figure out and yeah like mars being retrograde in the ninth house to me also feels like what are you what are you trying to achieve so you're not just don't just try to pursue a bunch of projects without having the clear goal and the final kind of goal in mind um there might be some family drama in the beginning of the month as venus conjoins pluto on january 1st in your fourth house of home and family so be warned, be careful. Romantic vibes come later on, January 2nd until January 26th. Venus will be in your fifth house. Venus rejoices in Aquarius in the fifth house. So you feel more inspired. You feel more connected to your partner. Your sex life might improve. There's a desire to spend more time with children. You may even feel like your inner child is coming out and there's more playfulness and cheerfulness. Especially good times are January 4th and 9th when Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. So romantic, good vibes. There might be some tension connected to shared finances, to your partner's money, to maybe debts you have um, somehow cramping up the joy and the fun you're having and bringing tensions, bringing conflicts up and things may get resolved or there might be more clarity. You kind of have to like step up and be more serious, be the bigger person closer to January 22nd when Venus conjoins Saturn. There's a full moon in Cancer, your 10th house on January 6th, bringing completion to a professional matter. Look at what got started in your life approximately six months ago, right? June, July, 2022. If you started a project, this might be a completion of the project. Maybe you get returns or recognition for the work that you've been doing. There is a sex sale to Uranus in the eighth house. So um, positive financial gains, right? Like maybe you make some money and you pay off a debt or you receive a bonus or you finish a project that is very collaborative. Mars goes direct on January 12th. If there's been any confusion connected to travel, legal matters, education, your views of the world and yourself in it, it will slowly start to clear up, especially after Mercury also goes direct on January 18th. Um, that is more like a turning point when you will experience more 
clarity about your home, about what makes you comfortable and what makes you secure and maybe any family tensions will clear up as well. Aquarius season begins on January 20th. There's a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st. This is still activating your fifth house of romance, creativity, and children. So there might be an inception of something. A very literal manifestation of this would be incepting a baby. Is that what it's called? Do you incept a baby? <laughs> What's a scientific term? You plant, plant a seed of a child. So there's a possibility, right? Like Aquarius is not the most like, the, not the most fertile sign you would think about like water any water sign like if you're if you're a cancer um if your price is rising with cancer in your fifth house and there's a cancer new moon that feels more like fertile necessarily potentially to me but anyways there's a possibility of some kind of inception when it comes to romantic relationships creative projects and children exciting right it's sextiles jupiter in your seventh so go on a date around this time if you're single and looking to mingle <laughs> or look at starting a creative partnership this could be fun i think uranus goes direct on january 22nd until april 21st all planets are direct this is your green light to go ahead and start the projects you've been feeling ready to start and finally venus enters pisces your sixth house on january 26th and until february 20th you have the benevolent supportive energy when it comes to professional matters work will feel less of a burden it will feel more enjoyable your professional relationships can improve you may find more joy in the mundane right or you get support when it comes to doing laundry washing the dishes paying off bills watch out for overindulging because sometimes venus in the sex might be like you want a cake here's a cake you want a chocolate here's five so just be warned, be careful. For those with Scorpio on the Ascendant, Jupiter has entered your sixth house on December 20th and will stay there until May 16th, 2023. And Jupiter in the sixth will create this urge to do a lot of work, right? There might be, you may be serving others, you may be starting a new job, there might be like new projects that you're handling. And it's Jupiter in Aries, so, you kind of want to overcome it all, want to achieve it all really quickly. Yet, I would urge you to be patient and proceed carefully and slowly because Mars, your chart ruler, is retrograde in your eighth house until January 12th and Mercury is retrograde in your third house until January 18th. So maybe there are certain things that you need to handle and clear when it comes to debts you need to pay, um, shared finances any kind of eighth house is very much you know agreements you have with other people with your boss with your romantic partner mercury retrograde in the third may imply that you need to have conversations surrounding your schedule and sort of clarify a lot of things right like if you're starting a new job um, maybe you need to maybe it's a job that's further away and you need to take your car to get maintained <laughs> is that what you do um take your car to get checked overall too the sun is in capricorn until january 20th and you are focusing on your schedule on your knowledge and skills whether you have enough knowledge you may be going on short trips you may be spending more time with siblings and like i said adjusting your schedule potentially Watch out for conflicts with siblings or ideological debates early in the month as Venus conjoins Pluto on January 1st. The energy shifts and lightens up after January 2nd when Venus enters Aquarius. That is January 2nd until January 26th. Aquarius is your fourth house, so you will find more joy from spending time with family. Your relationships might smooth out and kind of feel better. You also just in general will enjoy spending more time at home and will want to beautify your home, bring some kind of, um, you know, good energy, good like vibes, art into your home. January 4th and 9th are especially good for home improvements and for investing into your living space as Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. Be careful 
around the 14th when Venus squares Uranus in your house of relationships. Here we have tension between your partnership, business or romantic, and your home family living situation. So a multitude of ways this can play out. One of them is your partner disagrees with what you want for your home, or there's conflict between your partner and your family, or your partner's family and you or your family. So just watch out for tension between relationship and the needs of your unit and your living situation or your family. Um, the things will kind of clear out and you may get some kind of answers later in the month on January 22nd when Venus conjoins Saturn. You may get like, you know, you may get to be responsible and grown up and the boss in your family. There's a full moon in your ninth house on January 6th. It sextiles Uranus in the seventh. So it brings completion to your partnerships related to education. It can bring changes to your travel plans. Maybe you've been planning a trip and you finally go on it or you finally you know, buy the tickets or something like that. There may be changes and completion of a writing project. Legal matters can get resolved. Um, the sextile from Uranus in the seventh house to me feels like whatever changes you're going through are potentially beneficial to your partnership or to your business relationship. Mars goes direct on January 12th. That's exciting. This is your chart ruler. Mercury goes direct on January 18th and you're likely to see more forward momentum when it comes to debts, taxes, shared resources, your partner's money, as well as communication may become more clear, um, your schedule may become more clear, and any technical glitches that you've been dealing with are potentially going to improve. Aquarius season begins on January 20th, and we have a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st. This is activating your fourth house, sextiling Jupiter in your sixth, so new beginnings, the, the sextile to Jupiter in the six make me feel like, like there is a lot of work that will be required, right? Like there is new beginnings in the home and family and living situation, but sextile to Jupiter says like you will have to put some elbow grease. It means that you like it. It's a sextile to Jupiter. So you are excited, right? Like maybe you're moving in with your partner, but you need to make changes to this new home. You need to unpack, you need to buy new furniture. So it's it's a project, but you have no fears. You only have excitement. Even the fact that this is right after Mars and Mercury have stationed direct is a good sign. Um, Uranus goes direct on January 22nd and until April 21st, all 10 planets are moving direct. This is a great time to go after your dream projects and kind of set things in motion. And finally, Venus enters Pisces, your fifth house, on January 26th. And until February 20th, Venus is in the house she rejoices. Good time to date. You may feel more inspired, more creative, more romantic. Um, there is potential for having kids, right? Or spending more time with children and just sort of have fun, have letting your inner child shine and smile. For Sagittarius, rising Jupiter has returned to your fifth house on December 20th and will stay there until May 16th. This is a repeat of Jupiter and Aries we had from May into October 2022. So whatever new initiatives, new relationships, pregnancy, matters related to children, romantic endeavors, the got started, you will continue on. There's a strong urge with Jupiter and Aries to kind of like go for it, to make changes to your relationship, to start that creative project, to have a child right now, yet Mars is still retrograde in your seventh house, Mercury is retrograde in your second house until January 18th. And maybe you need to get on the same page with your partner first right? <laughs> the sun is also in Capricorn until January 20th. So, you know, yes, maybe you are becoming a parent. Yes, maybe you are starting a creative project, but maybe you got engaged, right? There's also a possibility for that. 
but are you and your partner on the same page have you cleared everything like have you talked about financial matters how much things are going to cost um so having those conversations about things that maybe are a little bit uncomfortable is crucial before you start the next chapter of your life um there may be conflicts and drama around money and values early in the month as venus conjoins pluto on january 1st right after that venus goes into aquarius so starting january 2nd until the 26th venus will be in your third house your communication becomes more charming you're more soft-spoken you may find yourself being a diplomat and a peacemaker going on more short trips um starting more writing projects right spending time with siblings and neighbors especially good days are january 4th and 9th um there's good kind of sex styles of jupiter in the house of romance and creativity the trying to mars in the seventh house so maybe you're starting a partnership with a sibling or you are writing starting a creative writing project um a bit more tensions romantically or maybe scheduling issues work drama is possible around january 14th as venus squares uranus and things will likely get resolved or you will feel more clear about the direction you're taking and like you will need to commit to something and make adjustments around january 22nd as venus conjoins saturn you will also just like get an opportunity likely to be the grown-up to be the more serious one in your relationship let's say there's some drama with a sibling right around the 14th like they expect you to drop everything go help them um january 22nd is likely when the drama gets resolved or you kind of get more clarity there's a full moon in cancer your eighth house on january 6th and this full moon brings completion to a financial matter maybe you pay off a debt um there may be changes to your shared resources maybe you open a joint bank account or you make an investment and you know get a mortgage with your partner um completing a partnership is also a possibility there's a sextile to uranus in the sixth house so this could be a change connected to improving your health right as well so maybe you've invested into your health and now you are paying off that debt potentially mars goes direct on the 12th mercury goes direct on the 18th so any confusion any tensions in relationships any kind of conflicts you've had about money or old fights battles you've been revisiting will be cleared up and you and your partner if you have been battling it out or have been questioning a lot of things you are more likely to be more aligned and find more harmony together aquarius season begins on january 20th there's a new moon on january 21st this activates your third house and could be a sign of starting a business could be a sign of starting a creative project there's a sextile to jupiter in your fifth house so writing creating um there may be changes to your schedule because something is transpiring in your romantic creative or childbearing sector like if you're becoming a parent your schedule in your everyday life is about to change and yeah the changes you're making i feel like you're kind of determined to adjust your schedule or to maybe bring bring better flow so that you allow space for harmony and fun uranus goes direct on january 22nd as i mentioned at the start of this video uh, until april 21st all 10 planets will be moving direct so this is lovely green light very productive time um good time to start and go after your projects and kind of you know go after things you desire and finally venus enters pisces on january 26th pisces is your fourth house until february 20th venus will be exalted powerful in the house of home and family and you will enjoy spending time with your loved ones spending time indoors having more get-togethers and making changes to bring more beauty into your home for capricorn rising jupiter has entered has returned to your fourth house jupiter would have been in your fourth house from may 16th until october 20th 
October, I feel like October 20th, October 28th, approximately. So basically Jupiter would have already been in your house of home and family from May into October 2022 what transpired you know what kind of changes happened surrounding your home and family because you will see more of that you will see chapter two but jupiter entering the fourth house will give you this restless feeling the urge to move to fix a home to buy a home to kind of solve all the problems in the home real quick yet as this urge appears we still have a lot of planets retrograde, right? Specifically, Mars is retrograde in your sixth house, Mercury is retrograde in your first house. So I wouldn't rush because you still need to solve some problems related to health, to your everyday work, um, you know, maybe make some kind of adjustments to be more clear about what you want, have conversations about the things that you want. Um, so don't rush, don't rush to like invest into property, don't rush to move or start to make renovations to the home you just moved in. Like be, be slow, be thoughtful, be proactive, but slow. Um, the sun is also in Capricorn until January 20th, so even more focus on your personal energy, personal initiative and rebirth. There may be there may be conflicts and power struggles early in the month. Venus will conjoin Pluto on January 1st, and you may be dealing with like the issues that have been in your life for a while. There may be kind of people attacking your character, some kind of control issues, power dynamics coming back to light. This is your opportunity to heal. Venus goes into Aquarius, your second house, on January 2nd, and until January 26th, it will bring you gifts financially, potentially. Um, you may be getting more gifts, you may be giving more gifts, maybe spending more on art and beauty, investing into your look. Whenever Venus is in the second house, I think it's a lot easier to buy a piece of art or you may kind of be drawn to spending on art. Uh, the best times are January 4th and 9th for Venus. They're especially lucky because Venus will sextile Jupiter in your fourth house and trine Mars in the sixth. So if anything, around January 4th, there might be some kind of positive development when it comes to home, family and real estate, maybe even some money coming from those sources your way. Tensions around, tensions with your partner, um, issues, you know, around money and having different values and whether you want to spend on creative pursuits, on romance, on your child, on becoming a parent, there might be some like drama and breakthroughs and breakdowns connected to that. Try to innovate, try to look for ways to think outside the box instead of pointing fingers. And, you know, things will clear and you will kind of sort of, kind of sort of have an understanding of how you want to proceed closer to January 22nd as Venus conjoins Saturn. There's a full moon in your house of relationships on January 6th, bringing changes transformation and completion to the sector of marriage and business. So what, what got started in your relationship sector six months ago? Maybe you started a relationship and you no longer feel it, so you let it go. Maybe you move a relationship to a more serious level. Maybe you have a conversation and you make it more official, right? Maybe you decide to have a child because there is a sex out to Uranus in the fifth house. So the changes you're making might be connected to having kids or you go separate ways because you want a child and they don't want a child or vice versa. Um, creative business partnerships may undergo transformation as well and experience a new kind of, you know, like a change, a major change in them. Mars goes direct on January 12th. Mercury goes direct on January 18th. So matters related to health that you've been dealing with should clear out any kind of hurdles and tensions and dramas you've been dealing with will clear out. 
questions of your personal confidence. You may feel more confident and more clear about the direction you want to go in. Aquarius season begins on January 20th. There's a new moon on January 21st. This activates your second house and sextiles Jupiter in your fourth. New beginnings in finances that are somehow connected to your living situation, to your family, to your home. Maybe you start to work from home. Maybe you start a new job that requires you to spend more time at home. Maybe you're investing into a home and spending money on the house you live in. Or, you know, even getting money from family, from land, from real estate matter. Maybe you start Airbnb and that kind of brings you money. Um, and overall, I think like changes to your finances are also possible around this time. Uranus goes direct on January 22nd. This could be a blessing to matters related to romance, creativity, and children, as well as... It marks the start of the three months long period until April 21st when all 10 planets are going direct. So this is your chance to go ahead and have the busiest, most productive time when the universe is giving you a green light and tells you, go for it, start it. Uh, Venus, finally Venus enters Pisces, your third house on January 26th and until February 20th, you will have better relationships with siblings and neighbors, more joy from spending time in your immediate environment. Um, your speech is softer, your writing is more inspired. Great time to kind of lean on your local community for support or present your services to the local community. There may be more short travel or you're just like enjoying learning new things and enjoying exploring your neighborhood. For Aqua Rising, Jupiter has returned to your third house, giving you the urgency to take ownership of your skills, to speak up about things you believe in, start like a writing or education project, and take on a new role in the community. I think Jupiter in the third will encourage you to start a business, to own your skills, to kind of become, embrace a new role, be a leader for the people around you. Yet, Mars is still retrograde in the fifth house. Mercury is retrograde in your 12th house until January 18th. And things are not as clear, right? There is, with Mars retrograde in the fifth, there might be matters related to your children you need to take care of, matters related to your romantic relationship. Mercury retrograde in the 12th house, you're also addressing your past and healing and maybe releasing something, releasing bad tendencies. So Capricorn season up until January 20th, there's a lot of introspection and healing and kind of like needing to let things go. So don't rush, don't rush to act on impulse of Jupiter in the third house, but definitely start to plant the seeds and make plans on how can you become that business owner? How can you start your YouTube channel? How can you become a teacher, etc. Um, some, some subconscious drama, power struggles, things hidden that you haven't addressed coming back to light, um, kind of ghosts and callbacks from the past are possible bad habits coming to bite you in the beginning of the month around January 1st when Venus conjoins Pluto, like let's say you over drink and that kind of spirals you and makes you feel really bad and makes you be really hard on yourself. So don't make things worse, right? Like pay attention to how much you've grown and how far you've come and don't blame yourself for one slip. That's what being human is all about. Um, the energy shifts woo, on January 2nd. Venus goes into Aquarius, your first house from January 2nd until the 26th. Love, love, love Venus in the first house. You're more charming, you're more creative, you're more attractive, better at bringing attention to you. Um, you may experience more gifts, more favors. This is a lovely time to do any beauty procedures, to shop, to ask people for support. Especially good times are January 4th and 9th when Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. There may be some drama between you and your family members or you and your neighbors or even just 
overall uncertainty about your living situation and tensions surrounding that around January 14th as Venus squares Uranus. And things may get more clear, encouraging you to be the bigger person, to be the grown up closer to January 22nd when Venus conjoins Saturn. There's a full moon in the house of health on January 6th. It brings completion of a work project, changes to a health situation. Maybe you kind of get over a bad health issue or, you know, you, you have made changes to your health and you see the results of that. Um, look back at what kind of professional things got started, what kind of, what kind of difficulties you've been dealing with six months ago and maybe see how have your life changed. Hopefully there's more balance. It might also be like a long project that is somehow connected to home and family. Maybe you gave birth six months ago and now you feel more in touch with your body or maybe there's been like a home renovation project that comes to, clo to a close and that, you know, I'm pulling that from the fact that this full moon is sextiling Uranus in your fourth house. Mars goes direct on January 12th. Mercury goes direct on January 18th. So more clarity when it comes to joy, self-expression, creativity. Um, with Mercury being direct in the 12th house, sort of seeing how you are standing in your own way and understanding the changes you need to make. Sometimes transits in the 12th house can be very confusing, but they can also be very healing. Like when there was a new moon in Virgo, my 12th house, I had really deep realizations about being better at managing my social media time. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> I take it one day at a time, but there were definitely some realizations. So you can experience stuff like that too. Aquarius season begins on January 20th with a new moon on January 21st. This is your personal rebirth, your chance to start a new happy new year for you. And you are reinventing yourself, right? There is a sextile to Jupiter in the third house. The ruler of Jupiter is direct. The ruler of Mars, Jupiter's ruler is also direct. So there's a lot of fresh new energy sextile to Jupiter in the third house. What's your message? Who do you want to be? What do you want to speak about? Um, there is a chance for you to take action and to become this person that you admire, you know, instead of pointing, instead of looking at other people, become the person you admire yourself. Uranus goes direct on January 22nd until April 21st. All planets are direct. This should be the most productive time when you're taking action, you're initiating things, and you're getting things done. And finally, Venus enters Pisces, your second house, on January 26th and until February 20th. You may get more gifts. You may spend on gifts. You are more giving and generous. You're more interested in spending on art and beauty and kind of investing into pleasures of the heart and the senses. Finally, if you are a Pisces rising, Jupiter has returned to your second house and Jupiter would have been in your second house from May into October, 2022. So this is not a brand new energy. This is a repeat of that. So now Jupiter will be in your second house from December 20th until May 16th, 2023. And this is good for making money. Making money, but also figuring out what makes you feel valued, right? But there might be like an urge to figure things out, to get a new job, to start a business, to ask for a raise. But I would encourage you not to rush because Jupiter is ruled by Mars, currently retrograde in your fourth house. And Mars is ruled by Mercury, currently retrograde in your 11th house. So before you take action and pursue this new job, pursue the new career, ask for a raise, I would encourage you to look at what do you want? What kind of things you desire, right? Like Mars retrograde in the fourth implies that there is certain family matters, living situation matters that need your attention. Um, and Mercury retrograde in the 11th is also just making you question your hopes and dreams and your plans for the future. So before, <clears throat> sorry, 
before you take action, I would just encourage you to look closely at what drives you, what inspires you, what motivates you, as well as potentially with Mercury retrograde in the 11th at the people you surround yourself with and whether they're supporting you or standing in your way and maybe even potentially of like who can be good for you right now, who can be a source of um, connections that you need in order to make that jump and to grow and to improve your finances. There may be some friendship drama early in the month as Venus conjoins Pluto in your 11th house. So any tensions, any power struggles, kind of hidden things, secrets can be coming to light. Um, questions of control, you know, simply like who makes all the decisions can frustrate you and can bring intense but possibly healing conversations. Venus goes into Aquarius, your 12th house, on January 2nd until January 26th. Your love life, your romantic life shifts behind closed doors. Doesn't mean things suddenly get quiet and nothing is going on, but it means that you are more enjoying fun with your partner in the privacy. You may feel more inspired, you may feel more interested in 12th house matters like astrology, spirituality, yoga. On the negative, 12th house is sometimes connected to self-undoing. So watch out for bad habits that are destructive, like eating too much sugar, drinking too much, dating people who are unavailable. Yet, there is some supportive energy, especially around January 4th and 9th when Venus sextiles Jupiter and trines Mars. Be careful of conflicts with siblings, neighbors, ideological battles, um, scheduling conflicts, and the words that may be destructive around January 14th when Venus squares Uranus in your third house. And you may see the resolution and kind of compromise and more understanding closer to January 20, 22nd when Venus conjoins Saturn. There's a full moon in Cancer, your fifth house, on January 6th. Cancer for Pisces rising is the house of romance, creativity, and children. So look back at six months ago and what was started what was started in your life or what got started in the life of your child, right? If you have begun a romantic relationship, this could be a sign of this relationship moving to a next level. A creative project might be completing, something may be changing in the life of your child. <clears throat> There's a good sex style to Uranus in the third house, like a positive aspect. So maybe the positive changes that you're experiencing are connected to like completing a writing project to um dealing you know with a sibling or a neighbor or some kind of communication project or even even changes to your romantic relationship could be connected to more honest communication uh, pisces is the last one so by the time i get to you i need to drink more water um, <clears throat> Mars goes direct on January 12th and Mercury goes direct on January 18th. So if there has been any uncertainty connected to your living situation or any friendship drama, um, maybe even uncertainty when it comes to how to pursue your dreams, what is it that you want, how do you want to approach your dreams, things will slowly start to clear out. Aquarius season begins on January 20th and there is a new moon in Aquarius on January 21st. This is activating your 12th house. New moons in the 12th house could be very enlightening when it comes to mental health, when it comes to destructive tendencies. So you may have this sense of like clarity of what kind of bad habits you need to release. How do you need to be a better friend to yourself? You may be choosing healing, you may be doing more volunteer work, starting a spiritual practice, starting to meditate. Um, there is a sextile to Jupiter in the second house, so I wonder if spiritual things could be a source of income for you, or maybe your volunteer work could bring you a job, like you ask someone you volunteer with for a contact and they 
give it to you and connect you to or even even like you know asking if you do volunteer if you are part of some kind of organization that helps others maybe you step up into a larger role and choose to grow within that organization uranus goes direct on january 22nd and until april 21st all 10 planets are direct this is your go ahead time to start every project that you've been planning and um use this as the time to go after it with no excuses use the planning until the 22nd and then make your plans a reality and finally very exciting venus goes into pisces your first house on january 26 and until february 20th you are more charming more magnetic more spiritual and beautiful and attractive, right? This is a great time for shopping, for beauty procedures, for asking people for favors and just leading or showing up in the world um, in a more beautiful way. But also I think a very creative time, very inspired, very wonderful time to connect with others and ask them for help and for resources. So this is it. Thank you for watching. If you are here, if you made it, Pisces rising, if you made it till the end, say hello in the comments below. Have a great January and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.